Okay. Yeah, as you can see from the title of the stream, it's, we're just going to mess around tonight. Uh, I'm going to ink this, and I'll explain to you who this is in a little bit. Uh, this, and we're going to look at old issue of Vampirella. We'll go back and forth. So, anyway, that's what we're doing tonight. So, let's start. Uh, this character is named, uh, I think it's Phantoma or Phantoma. I don't know. I just recently discovered her a few nights ago. I was trying to figure out what I was going to draw for tonight. And I was thinking about uh, public domain characters. Characters that are in the public domain that are free to use for anybody. You can use them in a comic book, a movie, merchandise, whatever you want. And... Uh, and I was looking for these characters, and a bunch of characters came up. And this one uh, really struck at me. And uh, her name is Phantoma, and she's been around for a very long time. Uh, she came around, what, 1940? Uh, one year before Wonder Woman. So she's... Basic, almost pretty much the, the first real superhero, superheroine in comics. And she was created by this guy named uh, Fletcher Hawks, who has a story on himself. <laughs> well, you know, we won't get into that tonight. This is more important. Uh, he also created another character that's in the public domain named Stardust. A wizard of outer space or something. These weird characters. People back then created really odd, strange, superheroic characters. They were either Batman types, where they were just wearing a costume, uh, or 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 they were these super powered beings who they were not like really like Superman, but they were. But they had these odd, they had odd powers, and and strange costumes and weird names and anyway, and she was really unique. Is that she was a woman, and Phantom is basically uh like um, a jungle witch. She lives in the jungle. And she has powers. And when she, she when you when you first see her, she's a really attractive blonde woman. But when she starts using her powers, her face turns into her face and her skin turn blue. And her face turns into a skull. And her powers aren't really that concrete. They kind of go with whatever the story required. So if there was a chasm to be crossed, you know, she could float across it. Or if there was a tree falling on someone, she would have super strength and lift it. It wasn't really defined what she did, but she could do things. And uh, she's been around for a long time and Comic book companies just recently have been putting her into their stuff because she's public domain. Last few years, if you've been into the comic book scene, uh, companies like Dynamite have been taking these public domain characters and putting them into stories. Like the original Daredevil. Have you ever seen the original Daredevil? They renamed him the uh, Death Defying Devil, I guess, to avoid copyright with. Marvel's Daredevil. 
and uh, Eric Larson, the creator of Savage Dragon, S Savage Dragon, likes to have fun with these public domain characters. He's got them strewn throughout his Savage Dragon, Dragon books. And I think Rob Liefeld did a did a one shot of a book called The Shield, like a Captain America type character. Again, public domain. So. If you're creating a character, or moreover, you you have a story and you need characters, you can go go look at the public domain. There's plenty of characters to to, to take. So, anyway, that's that. Let's start on her. Let's see. And I'll ink this for a little bit, and then I'll crack open that Vampirello book and we'll look at that for a bit. These are the type of characters I like drawing most of the time, these offbeat characters. I mean, it's okay drawing, you know, Wolverine or, or uh, Batman once in a while, but I like doing these characters that are off the beaten path.
wrong damn pen. Hold on. soft tip. I wanted the hard one for her neck. All right, put you away here. Let's get looking at this thing. Okay. Yeah, I gotta fix this camera. Hold on. Fucking bullshit. Hold on. I'm gonna see if I can turn off this auto focus. I want to just keep doing that. I thought I'd turn it off. Oh, I guess I didn't. Okay, now we can do it. All right. Now, story with this is a few weeks ago, I just I bought a whole bunch of Vampirella comics 
from mycomicshop.com. It was kind of like a birthday present to myself. Um, I already had two of them previously, so I just decided I'd just buy four. So I bought uh, the covers that kind of obviously caught my eye, as you can see. And that's, uh, what's her name? Barbara Lee, who was the girlfriend of Steve McQueen at the time. And if you didn't know, they actually tried to make a, uh, a Vampirella movie in the 1970s. This came out in 76, I think. Let's see. 78. Actually, it came out in 78. Yeah, they were going to, I think it was Hammer. Hammer Films were going to do a Vampirella movie. I can't remember who's going to be the, who they wanted to have her have be, uh, play her. But it wasn't going to be Barbara Lee. It was going to be, uh, I can't remember her name, but her face is in my head. If, you, um, if you've ever seen the movie Star Crash, um, um, the lady who played Stella Star in that movie, yeah, I think that's who they wanted for Vampirella. I can't remember her name. I wanted to say Barbara Steele, but it's not Barbara Steele. She would have been too old, I think. All right, let's look at this thing. As you can see. What the hell's going on? Jesus Christ. People below acting like assholes. Anyway. You can see. 1978 it was the year, I think, it was Close Encounters of the Third Kind came out that year. So you're going to see a bunch of adverts for Close Encounters and Star Wars. Star Wars came out a year before in 77. And Empire came out in 80. So you're going to see a bunch of ads for Close Encounters and a whole bunch of other stuff. So anyway, the contents page it just tells you what the stories are. And here's the, I guess, editorial, which talks about the Vampirella movie a little bit. People writing, hey, you uh, you uh, wrote in your last issue that there's going to be a Vampirella movie. What's taking so long? And then, who wrote this? I can't see. Who wrote the response? Well, um, I think the editor wrote the response. Said that the final negotiations are going on. And, of course, it never happened. There was a live-action Vampirella movie that came out in the 90s, but it was god-awful. Anyway, let's see. First story is a Vampirella story, which is usually the thing for Vampirella books. The first story is always a Vampirella story. And uh, this one's really... And this one's almost drawn like a Mad Magazine uh, comic. Something you would find in Mad Magazine. But nonetheless, uh, this first story is about this old lady who builds these robots and her goofball son who fixes them. And uh, this uh, son has this thing for Vampirella. He sees her in a newspaper and mommy decides to send a few of these robots to go fetch Vampirella and at the time Vampirella is uh, starring in a in a movie in, a, in these uh, stories here and she's accompanied by this guy who looks like Peter Vincent from Fright Night maybe that's where they got the inspiration from And uh, she's accosted by a robot. And then uh, it's a robot, and then shit starts happening. Let's see the artwork there. This book's in really good condition, being that it's over 40 years old. And then it starts to all the chaos and. And of course, you have to get your ass shot. 
right there. <laughs> you see a lot of them in this story. They really do exploit. I mean, a, a lot of the Vampirella stories are just... They're not terribly... They're, they're, the art's fine, but they're terribly written. Yeah. They're like cheesecake stories. The serious stuff come, come, comes in the later stories. And in the 90s, when they brought her back, they made her stories more serious and stuff. More lurid. More adult. I mean, these are... These aren't really adult comics. They're just, you know, a kid could get a hold of these and be like, eh. She's captured by these robots. It's a nice pair of eyes. And then she's hauled off. Hope you can see it. And uh, mommy is not exactly a good driver, so he crashes into the laboratory here. Yeah. And then they got Vampirella. And uh, it, it ends there, really. That's the first story. It's around 20 pages. I don't know, 10 pages and stuff. And then we get the first series of adverts for Star Wars <laughs> and Close Encounters. Lightsaber. What is it? Iron on transfers. And uh, a record story. I guess it's a narration or something. And a sleeping bag. Close encounter sleeping bag. How much is that? Doesn't say how much it is. Stupid. Well, anyway. Some more editorial. And here's where we start getting some more serious stories. And a lot of these stories really could be really good for Twilight Zone episodes or Tales from the Crypt or Tales from the Dark Side, Outer Limits. This would be a good Inner Sanctum story. There was a... It's, a, it's about a mob hitman. And there was these old radio plays back in the 30s and 40s called Inner Sanctum, and they were just really lurid crime stories. This would be a really good Inner Sanctum story. Or if they made comics of Inner Sanctum, this would be. Or if they brought it, made it live action, they could take this story. So anyway, story about a mob hitman. And he's trying to get away from the racket, so got a debt to pay and the mob wants him to do a hit. This is some really good art. Louis Bermeo. Some really good art. I think there's some ink wash in here. Some brush. Pen. A lot of really good a lot of good uh, characters too. Different types of characters. You can tell they're each their own individual guy. You can tell they're mob guys. They're just kind of sneak, sneaky, snaky, ratty looking guys. And his assignment is to uh, kill this lady here. And at first he tries to do it. He's got her in his sights and he just can't do it. He, fa he, suddenly, he, he starts to fall in love with this woman. He starts following her and he gets involved with her and ultimately she tells him uh, that's a good face right here see that face that's a really nice face uh, she ultimately tells him 
Uh, she's pretty much on the run herself. Her husband was murdered. And then all of a sudden, the mob goes and checks in on this guy and finally he hasn't killed this woman. So they try to kill him. And there's some good, you know, back and forth. These are some really good books. If you're doing a book on, let's say, crime action, these are some little shooting out a boat light. Then you got a boat chase scene. Again, this is really good. If you're doing a comic with some action, See that? Some really good action sequences. This looks like they were storyboarded for a movie. Some really good action scenes. Final payoff there. Michael Bay ending with the big old explosion. And then you find out the end. He actually tells her what did he say? What did he say? He says a name of a guy, Joe Carrillo, and it shocks her. Like, what? Finds out that this Joe Carrillo was the guy who was married to this woman. And he had killed her. He had killed him, but she still goes away with him. <laughs> yeah. We'll do one more story, then we'll go back to that. Here's another one. Here's a here's a here's a story that'll be good for like Outer Limits or something. A story about a guy who's an empath. Feel people's emotions, and it really affects him. He's got a wife who's a bitch. His life is miserable. He sees a car crash, and he starts reacting to it. He starts feeling what the people are feeling within the crash. So because of that, he's. You know, the police come in and they take him to the hospital too. And there he meets a doctor who gives him this prescription for these experimental pills. The doctor kind of knows that he's an empath and he gives him these pills that'll help him suppress it. It's kind of like the stuff they, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Scanners, where uh, these people are, you know, psychics in that movie. And for them to suppress their powers, they take this drug. Well, anyway. Now, this guy starts taking this drug, but there's a side effect to it. He starts taking the form of the person he feels all this emotional stress from. So he's at, he's at the office with his boss, and he takes the form of his boss. Range. And he gets fired. <laughs> uh. Then when he's walking home, he gets mugged by some guy and he takes the form of the mugger and he kills him. And there's some social commentary in here. You know, him being white and the guy being black and the poor and the rich and all that. Even back then they had that. Back then it wasn't so nauseatingly woke as it is now. 
So the guy escapes and he runs off and he changes back. And then he goes back to his wife. He's a bitch. Finds out he was fired and they get into a fight and because of the drug he takes the form of his wife. And they start fighting. See that? They start fighting. And they end up killing each other. <laughs> but he doesn't revert back to his original form. He stays in the form of his wife. And this one looks like he was drawn mostly with a pen. Like a dip pen. Who did the art for this? I forgot. To... Hold on. Leo Duranona. And that's, a th and that's the other thing with these Vampirello books. They always got these South American... Like, really good South American, European, Southern Asian artists. So, we'll close that for now. We'll get back to the book. I mean, the book. The drawing. Okay, let's see. We did that. Let's just keep going with her. Top here. Probably hear neighbor downstairs blasting on music.
like now. I was afraid that they made her too muscular initially, but then I started looking back at how she was originally drawn, and it's just basically <laughs> muscular. So, I guess it's right on model, yeah? She wears a black bikini with a clear skirt. I'll be right back.
two more stories? Okay, two more stories. Okay. Next story is a word one. This little kid and this dog find this guy in the desert. And they find out this little kid lives in the desert with his mom. And they find this dude and they nurse him back to health. And find out this chick left her husband because he was a lout. And then they, excuse me, they, uh, uh, st uh, they start welcoming this guy into their lives. He's mysterious. And, and the guy starts hanging around them and find out the little kid likes old horror movies just like this guy does and this guy starts falling in love with this kid's mom but she rejects him Initially rejects him. And a bunch of weird stuff happens. Guy starts disappearing out of reality for some reason. This is a weird one. This could be a Twilight Zone story. Kid starts getting sick. For some reason. And then we find out. This guy is the older version of this young boy. Came from the future. And the hole that opened up for him to come into the past is closing down. That's why he's fading away. And so uh, they figure out that to save this kid, he's got to put his uh, blood into him through a blood transfusion. Something about a virus or something. I don't know. The kid gets better. And... <laughs> A little play on the movie Shane. Shane, come back. Come back, Shane. You ever seen that movie Shane? The old western about the gunslinger. The retired gunslinger. Even though his name's not really Shane, it's... <laughs> Again, weird stories. Subtle science fiction stories. Who drew this? I can't remember who drew this. Jose Ortiz. And they used the same stable of artists for all these books. These Vampirella books. This guy's been... This guy's done a bunch of stuff. And, and here's Gonzalo Mayo. A little bit more extravagant art. A lot of different techniques. Brush and pen. Ink wash. Really weird story. about this chick in New York who leaves her boyfriend because he's boring and shit and wants to have her own shit. Gets this apartment. It's too good to be true. That's a nice panel right there. A lot of nice drawings of women in this. Almost every panel has a really <laughs> has, a, has a woman in it. All the panels here, all the panels here. So anyway, she starts noticing this old guy across the way, staring at her window. It's weird. And she wants nothing to do with her boyfriend. And she, she, 
keeps noticing that this old guy keeps staring at the window. It's a really nice paint. Real nice drawing of eyes right here. Lady's eyes. There's a nice drawing here too. Really nice drawings in this. The stories are not that good, but the art's phenomenal. It's obvious they use models. Mm. Finds out the guy across the way is dead. She keeps calling and turns out this guy who keeps calling her is the guy across the street pretending to be her boyfriend and she wouldn't invite him in and she gets freaked out, invites him and he shows up as a rotting corpse. This last one. Anyway, that's the end of those stories and now we're going to go into the adverts. Some more editorial. And of course he is Vampirella novels. How much were these? A dollar twenty-five. Let's see those. Vampirella fan club. You can buy a model of Vampirella. No glue needed. Put it together in minutes. How much is that? Two bucks. How much? How tall is she? Five inches tall, so it's the size of an action figure. So if you were around back then, probably got a hold of that. There's probably guys out there who still have that. Ordered it. A box. Keep all your Vampirella magazines. That's probably where Ethan Van Skyver got the idea for his... Cyberfrog box, his $25 box that he has up so he can store all his Cyberfrog books in. Posters. These would be cool. They have six feet tall posters. $2.98. Jesus Christ. Now that poster would be, I don't know, what, 50 bucks? Maybe. There's some other ones here. Uncle Creepy, Cousin Eerie from the Creepy and Eerie books. Same publisher put out Creepy and Eerie put out Vampirella, Harris Publications. And here they are. These are posters. Did Warren put out Famous Monsters? I think so. You can buy posters. Those really nice covers. Basil Golgos and Frazetta and Corbin. Others. God, th there has to be people out there who have these, who ordered stuff from these magazines and bought this stuff. There has to be. Giant size Frankenstein pinup, six feet tall. Jack Davis from mad a buck fifty somebody has to have one of those that would be so cool you find that out and of course post pinup posters of you know 30 by 41 the Hulk Spider-Man that's a big poster that's bigger than matinee size Old movies, The Black Cat, Frankenstein, Dracula, The Werewolf, The Wolfman, Barnabas Collins from Dark Dark Shadows, King Kong, Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, Heidi, I don't know what that is, Creature on the Black Lagoon. These movies back in 1978 were big movies. 
a lot of kids like that stuff. Now they're kind of kind of passe now. Like, like certain specs of people may like them. I mean, I like them, but you know, these were these really went out of fashion when movies like Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, Evil Dead started coming out. And their heroes were Freddy Krueger and Jason, Michael Myers. And you can buy black and white movies too. I think these were Super 8. Let's see. Yeah, Super 8, $9.95. All these old goofy movies, The Black Room. Is that the, is that the Boris Karloff movie? Yeah, it is. The Boris Karloff movie. Anyone's ever seen that? That's a odd one. The Blob. The Vampire and the Ballerina. The Curse of Mummy's Tomb. These are old British schlock movies. Battle in Outer Space. War of the Worlds. Super 8 movies. Super 8, not VHS. Super 8. Only way you can get a Super 8 was, you know, either you got one from, you know, Sears or Montgomery Ward. Or you had to rent one. And here's one right there. You can buy one from Vampirella Magazine Movie Projector for regular 8 and Super 8 movies. 40 bucks. Right Right there, so you can play your movies. You can buy a big old haul. Planet Apes Super Movies, Horror Movies, Super Super 8 and Regular 8. Creature from the Black Lagoon, Curse of the Demons. The Creature Walks in Moments, the original Frankenstein. Rodan. Bunch of weird B movies. Holy really cool shit. You don't see this shit anymore. Yeah, they, they don't make magazines like this anymore. I wish they did. And of course, you can buy back issues of Vampirella. <laughs> like you can now. You gotta look for them. 1978 Vampirella number one was 20 bucks. Now it's what, five thousand bucks? I got this book for. Good lord, how much did I pay for it? I got the receipt right here. Uh, what number is this? Hold on. Sixty-nine. Huh. Sixty-nine. Uh. Four forty. I spent four forty for this from mycomicshop.com. It's in good condition. I mean, it's in good condition. It's in great condition, and it's looks like it's just a few years old. Really well taken care of. Whoever had this took care of this really well. And, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a stickler for condition. I don't care. I just want to own these. These and comic books, too. I, I don't care what condition they are. I want them. Price. Well, price matters, but the condition, I really don't care. As, as long as it's got the cover on it and the pages are intact and this looks like this. I mean, it's, that's fine with me. I don't care. As long as I can read it. See those really hard to see. I'll show you the cover. I'll show you the ones I got. Not not here, but I'll show you after I'm done here. Right before we start inking that Phantom again. King Kong was big. Tarzan was big. Books, art books. There you go. Frazetta, Frazetta, 
Ariel. Frazetta was huge. Of course, he contributed covers to Vampirella. And Eerie. And Creepy. Conan novels. Conan. These are just these are just the reprints of the original pulps from late 20s, early 30s. Conan the Avenger, Conan the Conqueror, Conan the Avenger, Conan of Aquilonia, Conan the Buccaneer, Conan the Freebooter, and on and on and on and on. And of course those have those of course these have these those great Frazetta covers. Frazetta paintings. Reprints of the old EC comics. Two bucks a piece. The Conan novels were $1.95 a piece. Paperbacks. God, they're like <laughs> worth a lot more now. Books about fit movies. Books on sci fi movies, horror movies. Bunch of books. People read books back then. They didn't play video games. There's some pot boilers. Detectibus, Dashiell Hammett, The Thin Man, The Maltese Falcon, Serpico, Ian Fleming, Live and Let Die. More books. And this really caught my caught my attention. Nerd on the ruse. <laughs> they actually have had these. There has to be someone with these. Somewhere. Four dollars. <laughs> Jeez, these these have to exist somewhere. Somebody has to have them. In a collection, in a box, in an attic, somewhere. Underoos for adults, adult nerds. What if you can make underwear like that for a Teespring or something? So I'd do it. Let's see, what else they got here? Subscriptions. Send away and get a subscription. Here we go. Star Trek. Up there. Star Wars. Star Wars came out a year before this. Makeup kits. That was a big thing back then. Kids do their own makeups. Make yourself into a vampire or an ape. Planet of the Apes came out, when did that come out, in the 60s? And they had the eight movies in the 70s, so that was pretty big for kids. Those old model kits, too, were coming out. There we go, Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Magazines, calendars, iron-ons, sketchbooks and original drawings. Is these the Ralph McQuarrie things? Portfolio of paintings. Concept art. That's concept art right there. You can tell. Ralph McQuarrie. How much was that? Seven ninety five. Yeah. Star Wars was massive. Masks. Of course, you can buy masks. I think Don Post had the masks. Of course, they were pricey. Even then, thirty-seven ninety-five for a Chewbacca mask, forty-three ninety-five for a Darth Vader mask, and you could buy Star Wars Super Eight movie, but not. Let's see. Is that the entire movie? That can't be the entire movie. 
of selected scenes. So it's maybe just a few minutes long. Black and white Super 8 silent with subtitles. <laughs> oh, 995. Yeah, 995. Color Super 8 film with sound. 2995. Now you can just buy the movie anywhere. Go to Target and it's right there. The original. 20 bucks. You can buy the original three, the prequels, and even the uh, new films, including Rogue One, for what? A little bit over 100 bucks? It's amazing. Posters and t-shirts. Again, people have to have these things somewhere. All this stuff. Somebody has to have a Super 8 of Star Wars. Patches and pins and... Lightsaber. I think this is like a foam thing. It's not the one that extend. Paint by numbers, posters, and and of course the action figures, the old Kenner action figures, two ninety five a piece, two ninety five a piece, and now. They're worth how much? The original? Any one of these original? Maybe still in the maybe still in the package. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, the originals. Order form, you can. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. And it's in more. And there's more. Models. He's the old Morbius. Mobius? Models? I don't know. Darth Vader costume and mask. How much is that? Four ninety five. And more toys. The Land Speeder. 750 the tie fighter 1595 the x-wing 1595 if you had all if you have all three of these in nice condition this is worth thousands of dollars right now shit yeah so that's that and an advert for another book Warren put, put out 1984 I think this is like heavy metal I can't remember so anyway that's that for that one let me see I got the other ones here hold on a moment I bought a whole bunch of them Okay, I'll show you the ones I just got. Yeah, this one it's got this really nice painting in the front. Is that Jose Gonzalez? I think it's a really nice painting. We might look at that one next. Well, not now. Maybe next time. And then I got this one. Another photograph. What year was it? These are still in the 70s. That last one was 1980. a big issue a really nice cover 
this one's different than the other books. This one's it's one big Vampirella story. And it's a thick one. I think it's double size. Seven great vampy stories. They're all interconnected stories. And uh, I've got these other two that I've had. Another nice cover. Vampirella being accosted by these two perverts. And then another one. Again, she's being accosted. <laughs> Side by a robot. Again, really nice covers. They really did. Really did a really good job. Those covers. So. That's that. We'll look at one of these next time. Get back to her. Okay, let's see here. She's almost done, she's quick. Not much to her, really. Oh, and before I forget, I started my, started my comic this week. I got one page done. <laughs> I was so distracted this week. I had every intention to, you know, going on air, inking it. Nah. Not this time. Maybe next time. I'll ink some panels. And I'd show you what it looks like now, but it's not, it's nothing much. Just one page. And believe me, there's, there are some good pages in it. I can say that. Action. Action-packed stuff. Big legs. 
cheeks of hers. Again, I was afraid that it made her too muscular. Muscular. And if you look back at the, uh, the original comics, she, she's a big girl. <laughs> she really is. Wears a see through skirt. And if I were to color her, she'd probably be both blue skin because that's what she looks like when she's um, using her powers and she first looks like a beautiful blonde haired woman and then she starts using her powers her skin turns blue and her face turns into a skull yeah that's that's what comic book characters were like back then they were strange Odd. Start doing her hair. But I'm not going to color her. I'm just going to let her be black and white. I don't want to waste any more of the ink on my markers. Again, this character is in the public domain, so she's free to use. You can do anything you want with her. And I think the rule is with public domain works is that it, ha it can't look exactly like the original. So you have to do something different with her. You can still use her name and. Probably her light, or you know what she looks like, but she had to do something different.
And if you're wondering, there's a bunch of characters in the public domain. Even characters that you would know, like Tarzan. Frankenstein, of course, in the public domain. Dracula. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Bunch of characters. John Carter of oh, you know Edgar Rice Burroughs, creator of Tarzan, you know Princess of Mars, and that that's in the public domain. And how the public domain works when something gets into public domain it has to be what is it eighty some years? After original creator's death, I think that is. I think that's it. And you're probably thinking, isn't Conan in the public domain? No, he's not. He's in the public domain in Europe. There's a company out there. I think it's a French company that that's making Conan comics based on those original stories and they're not called Conan they're called a the Sumerian and they're really nice looking books nicer than the than the stuff Marvel's putting out now Marvel owns just got the the that comic license back was that a few years back yeah Robert E. Howard died years ago you would think his stuff would be in the public domain here no Original Mickey Mouse is in the public domain. Steamboat Willie, that's in the public domain. So if you wanna, yeah, you can do a Steamboat Willie comic. If you want. Okay, start doing her suit. And in, well, how long would that be? In a few years? How long would that be? Tw I think 20, 30 something maybe? 20, something? I don't know. In less than a decade, Batman will be in the public domain. Yep. Batman and Superman. So. So. If you're wondering, yeah, those characters will be in the public domain soon. Well, not soon, but in a few years. Not even a few years, like a decade maybe. You know, if you have an idea for a Batman story, you don't have to use Batman. You can make a derivative of Batman. Make a Batman story, but don't put Batman in it. Do what Frank Miller did with Holy Terror. Anyone knows that book. Frank Miller versus, not Frank Miller, but Batman versus terrorists. That's what Holy Terror is. He pitched a book and DC didn't want to do it. So he went to another publisher. And uh, made this piece of 
what people think is propaganda. You know, anti-Muslim propaganda. That's what they call it. Holy terror. And all he did, we just, he, he kept all the major story elements in it. He just changed the Batman character into a character called the Fixer. Altered his suit. And he had a Catwoman character in there too. Instead of a Catwoman, she's like in bondage gear and stuff. Many people think that's probably his worst work. Because it's so odd looking. Black and white. It's like it's almost like Sin City in a way, if anyone's ever seen it. But that's one way you can get around copyright. Just make up a character that's derivative of character. And uh, you know you can do it. Marvel and DC have been doing it for years. Green Lantern, you know. That's the derivative of Green Lantern. Captain Marvel. Or uh, Hawkeye. Green Arrow. Submariner. Aquaman. The Avengers. Justice League. Yeah. So, you can do it. Just use some imagination. Walt Simonson's doing the Thor book, but it's not Thor. Not not the Thor we all know, the Marvel Thor. He's doing his his version of Thor, which is based on Norse mythology. All the all the myths is public domain too. So Norse myth, Norse myth. That's how Thor was created. Marvel's Thor. Too much Dracula. Again, based on a public domain character. You just need to have some imagination, some creativity. You can. And you can use these characters that are free. You know, you can do Sherlock Holmes versus Tarzan if you wanted. You can do Phantoma versus, I don't know, who else? Dracula. You can do that if you want. needs to be done to her. I don't know if I should color in her eyes. Yeah, let's do it. 
darken them. done. Okay. No, I didn't. Okay. Let's see. What else? Let's see what else needs to be done. Pieces. And of course, I'll always go over these again fix them right before I post it on Twitter because there's always parts you miss little spots looks like see I see I'm, I'm just finding <laughs> I'm finding things add some more Yeah. There she is. Fan Phantoma or Phantoma. some more to her. Let's add some magic. Use the other end. Let's add some magic to her. Make sure that's all dry. Add some magic to her fingers here because that's what she does. Yeah. 
had some Kirby Crackle. I don't know what her powers look like, really, so I'm just, you know, adding whatever. See. Anything else I need to put on here?
I need stuff. More to do. Damn it. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to put this magazine back in its bag. I guess that's probably it oh, or maybe not I don't know uh, I don't know what else to do <laughs> I don't want to end the stream so early and that's what I've been doing for the past few uh, hmm I don't know what else to do draw something else I don't know
in addition to buying a bunch of Vampirellas, I also got a bunch of these old magazines called Fate. Fate Magazine. And I remember these from uh, the 1980s. My mom used to buy these a lot. She used to go to uh, uh, these uh, bookstores that would specialize in the occult. And uh, these places were pretty cool. She used to take me to them. And uh, these stores would have a lot of stuff. Tarot cards, crystals, candles, books on spells, books on how to read tarot. And sometimes these stores would have classes and how to read tarot and other types of things. And one of the things my mom would always get was Fate Magazine. And Fate's been around, it's still around. Uh, it's been around since the 1950s, and it used to be a, kind of like a pulp magazine. And you would have, it was, it was mostly, uh, you know, weird occult-based fiction, and there was some other, like, I, I don't know if you could say fact-based stuff, like non-fiction stuff, but interesting things about the paranormal. And it uh, started out as a big book, and then later they kind of made it into a digest. And so uh, that's when my mom started buying these. There were these little digest books. So I bought about, how many did I buy? Four of these things. I decided like about four. These are what they used to look like. We got those. This is what they used to look like. These are fate magazines. Again, I got them from uh, mycomicshop.com. And, uh, yeah. The original magazines used to have uh, artwork on them, like the pulps used to have paintings and stuff. And then they you know, graduated away from that. And in the 70s and 80s, they went to this plain old just just text and it would have these really weird stories about them and shit werewolves and and, 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 and just they, they would cover everything paranormal UFOs crypto, cryptology you know like werewolves and Bigfoot and Jersey Devil crap and um, ghosts and um, ancient civilizations, everything that was just, you know, <laughs> everything of the paranormal, psychic experiences, all that stuff, near death experiences, uh, astral travel, all that in these magazines. Maybe in a future stream, I'll go through one of these books. Yeah, there's a lot of really wild stuff in these things. Not just in the stories, but like the stuff people are trying to sell. Just really crazy and weird. So, that'll probably be another <laughs> uh, stream sometime in the future. I'll go through those. A big old haul of fate. So anyway, and I'll probably also go through some comics. I'll do what they didn't. I'll do what I'll, I'll rip off cartoonist K Fab and go through old comics and stuff <laughs> while I draw. So okay. So if that's it, I guess that's it. Yeah, I've been out for two hours. Just right on two hours. Okay. So I'll be back on. Let me see. Let's say Saturday, Tuesday. Be back on Tuesday. I might be on YouTube. Maybe. 
I'm thinking about YouTube. If I'm not on YouTube, I'm, I'm back on Twitch. So, anyway, uh, right down there, follow, subscribe, Streamlabs, pay me, not pay me, <laughs> PayPal me. Uh, those are in the channel descriptions. I got Twitter. Uh, I just uh, put photos of the last two streams I did. The pictures I did turned out better than I thought. The the big, um, the big, the uh, uh, page from Dark Knight Returns. That's on there. Was in detail pictures, the mystique thing I did. That's up. This will be up. I don't know in a few days, whenever. This video will be up on demand on this on Twitch. If you want to rewatch it, it'll also be on YouTube within a few days. So I got those across all that. All goes to this thing up here. Help me get a Ferrari or Lamborghini. It don't matter. And a porn star girlfriend. All proceeds go to that. So. Uh, that's it. That's it. Got nothing else to say. Nothing else to do. Uh, I guess I'll see you all on Tuesday. Maybe on YouTube. 